One should not voyage beyond the sand. Watch me. What secrets hide outside the main demo area of Necrophosis? Howdy everyone, my name is SK Pac-Man, and while this isn't my normal content, today I'd like to take you guys on a tour of the rest of the carefully crafted world eons beyond the end of existence. Remember to subscribe, it's free, and you can get notified when I upload more videos. A like on the video would be greatly appreciated as well. First, a quick recap. Necrophosis was inspired by the haunting artwork of Zidslaw Bezensky. It's set in the far distant future, beyond the end of our universe, where the old gods are dead and only the tortured souls of the end remained. A place where even death can die. In the demo, you're tasked with finding brains, returning lost property, and appeasing entities to clear your path forward. While there isn't much to glean for what's in store the rest of the game, at least the demo's gameplay tells us there will be puzzles, items, and plenty of terrifying, beautiful artwork. To be clear, I have tried three separate times to record this video. Each time either the recording broke, the game crashed, or my hacking tools simply failed. But since you're seeing this video, clearly I got something to work. Also, I asked Dragonus, the game's developer, for permission to do this. One thing to point out before we get to exploring this game is it does have a rather impressive photo mode. Well, yes, you can move the camera around. You're limited to a certain distance from the player model, so that can't really be used to explore outside of the playable demo area. Let's start with the main menu. While some developers opt for a 2D image with effects over it to save on space, time, and file size, the developers at Dragonus made a fully modeled intro sequence, complete with bodies, bones, and more. If you zoom out, you'll see this is just a tiny bubble with a few assets and lighting thrown in. Unfortunately, there's no way to actually get into the game now that I've moved the camera, so we'll have to start the game over. Once we load back in, you'll see we have a continue button, since I've already completed this demo once before. You can check out that video on my channel. Once we finally load in and our character wakes up, we're loaded into the introduction area, complete with skulls, mummies, and hey, here's what our character looks like. Exiting this underground area, we come to the demo's main puzzle area. Our friend here that housed the shadow creatures now lies here with his chest open, looking like something just burst out of him. Our king of old with his symbol of oppression and bygone era of authority, and his effigy to his own greatness stand proud in the sands. The guy we knocked over for his brain with the blast horn is still hanging around, along with the horn we blew in on. There also seems to be a couple friends tied up in the mix here. The pedestal with our oracle friend sits nicely with our found coins. Uh, one interesting thing about this skull is the lighting effects are tied to the camera, not our player model, so entering the mouth adjusts the lighting dramatically. Hey friend. Once we exit, all is well again. Moving down the line of the main demo, we have an area with Kanum's sword. Our friend and the obstacle are both gone now, since we previously finished the demo. These massive skeletons of Elder Gods may not be speaking to us anymore, but they sure do look cool. I tried to look at all the boxes for anything interesting. All I found were faces of the damned. Lastly, before moving on, I wanted a better look at these figures that looked like they were in prayer. Our friend in gold here is still creepy, but I noticed something I didn't see in my first playthrough. He has a third eye. While definitely creepy, I can now see the compassion the text was talking about. Our universe in a robe didn't visit us this time, since he only shows up in a new game, not continued ones. Let me know if you want to see him closer up. Next, I was curious about these buildings. Inside the first one was literally nothing, not even textures. The second one, however, was a negative view of the window texture on the outside. The th third was the same thing. Back to the playable area, we have the feet and face that Osmandius, if I'm pronouncing that name correctly, was talking about. Also, the face is a full 3D model, not just a texture in the distance. Once again, back to the playable area, we can see a demon who's trying to make payment for entry. Too bad he didn't make it. Underground is the rest of his skull and hand. 
This guy here is still praying. Probably the nothing now. Just beyond these gates is where the demo ends. If you step through with the player, it rolls credits. But since we have control of the camera, we can fly right past it. First thing beyond the gate is this massive structure with a green glowing light at the top. Not sure what it's supposed to signify, but it's definitely memorable. It stands tall amongst the wasteland bordering these stairs. At the end of this path, we find a sign that reads, Below is never more. Darkness there and nothing more. I'll be the judge of that. These guys seem a little too dramatic about it, though. Descending the staircase, we go through a color shift and are greeted by a hallway covered in horrifying faces. Neat. Continuing onwards brings us to the saddest undead rave in the underworld. I'm not sure what the purpose of these guys is. Are they here as enemies or just to be creepy? Let me know what you think. This underground area has three main directions to go. We'll start with the far left. Descending the staircase, we come to a room with shallow water at the bottom filled with pillars. There's a skeleton at the back dipping its tootsies in, and this guy above him just hanging out. If I pan to my left, however, you'll see some pure nightmare fuel. I'm not sure if he's supposed to just be creepy or if it'll be an enemy that chases you. I don't want to cross him, though. There's a chest in this room, but there's nothing inside of it. Moving on to the other choice in this hallway, we come to a dead end with pulsating meat blocking our way. Lovely. Back to the afterlife's saddest slow dance, and onto the other side of the hallway where we meet this Home Depot skeleton decoration. Behind him is unfinished hallway that descends into nothingness. The room at the end of this hallway seems to be a throne and a guy who died of a tummy ache. This cloaked figure is definitely creepy. We also have a guy who bored himself to death, and another just drank a little too much. Back to the main hallway, and our dancers of doom. We head down the center hallway where upon descending the stairs we find ourselves in a cavern of broken architecture, sweltering heat, and this guy. He only loops back and forth through one animation, but he's definitely massive. His body ends just behind his ribcage, but he doesn't seem phased by it. I wouldn't want to be caught by this guy, though. He's absolutely massive. Exit to our right through these arches and up the long stairway. We emerge at a rather inviting scene. But before we move on, we should go back and look at a couple things. This demon who seems to have been ripped apart. And this other demon who was slain in battle. Missing textures and all, this is an amazing set piece. What looked super painful is the sword that did him in is actually piercing through his hip bone. Ouch. And back to this scene, we'll see what looks like mushrooms on the ground. They are not mushrooms. And these otherworldly priestesses who extend below the ground. I say priestesses like I know they're female, but that's just assuming gender. They're terrifying nonetheless. The only semi-normal looking thing here is this one plain skull amongst the ripped and stringy textures. If we continue on through the skull's gullet, we come to an interesting scene of worshippers bowing before who I assume is their new ruler, since all of the other old gods are dead. He looks like something that would be right at home in dead space. Six arms, four legs, and all bug-like. He's definitely an interesting one to see. In the background, there are more of these statues, and all of them are the same except for this guy in, in particular, with a regular, if broken, skull on him. Everyone else has the same withered look. These two are the largest of the models, extending from the mountains. Heading back to the worshipper scene, if we continue along the path, we get a quick color change and the feeling of overbearing presence. Walking through this landscape of decaying bodies and scrawling tombstones, there doesn't seem to be any relief from the oppression of this environment. Coming to the end of the path, we're greeted by a hooded figure sitting atop this columned door. A closer look shows this might actually be death in all his glory. As magnificent as he is, he looks pretty worn down and incapable of fulfilling his duties. I expect in the gameplay he gives us some speech we bring him something of value and he lets us through. Passing through brings us to none other than Cthulhu. And his summoning party. 
These are definitely the most disturbing models in the entire demo. They've risen this token from the Cauldron of Blood to attempt to resurrect Cthulhu. When I say these are the most disturbing models, I mean it. Just look at those faces. Absolutely terrifying. And the big man himself. He looks emaciated and incapable of cosmic horrors. Definitely a sight to behold, though, as he towers over most of the other entities here. But what's that behind him? We still have one more entity to visit. He's a bit far off, so we'll fly there quickly. What entity could be sitting upon this throne cast off from the rest of the desert's denizens? None other than our man, Osmandius. While that's all the locations and entities in this map, it looks like the whole play area is just a tiny speck in a vast desert. That's because it is. If I center the camera on my player model and zoom out, you'll get an idea of just how massive this play area actually is. There goes the opening area with the puzzles, the gate, and all that lies beyond. As we zoom out further, we can see the edge of a huge square desert, followed by what looks like a circle. The circle then turns into a dome where the sky is projected. Outside the dome is more landscape, and that's just how big the map is. In reality, it's a massive sphere covering the whole landscape. The entirety of the demo fits in that tiny dot of models. And that's all I found outside the boundaries of Necrophosis demo. I hope you all had fun. I know I did. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, share it with a friend. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.